Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everyone, my fellow Redeemers here to Redeemer United Church of Christ as we worship together on this Independence Day Sunday, on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Reverend Peter Bauer, the uh, interim pastor here for Redeemer United Church, and I warmly welcome all of you this morning. We want to thank again um, Sissy Warnicke, who is our organist and pianist for this morning. Sissy, I really want to thank you especially for playing the Navy hymn uh, this morning as part of the prayer of the Eternal Father. Strong to say, you didn't realize that we were going to be synchronicitous. I'm wearing my Navy uh, War College tie this morning in honor of the 4th of July. So we thank Sissy for playing this morning. We also thank Warren Lamp Lampman as our liturgist this morning. Thank you, Warren, for being here. And we thank David Albright always for doing the honors of taping the service today and editing it. And so it will be available to be posted on our website later today. The altar flowers are in loving memory of Glory Ann Lunsman. They are provided by Pam and Carl Griffin. The side table flowers are in memory of Louis Kunde Jr. and they're provided by Arlene Kunde and family. And the bulletins are in celebration of Independence Day and they're provided by Pam and Carl Griffin. Um, we will be having Holy Communion today. Um, uh, upcoming events include the rehearsal for the Lutzman Petrovsky wedding next Friday. The wedding, of course, will be happening on Saturday, the 10th of July. Please also note, you probably saw the sign coming in this morning, the Germania, Germania annual supper will be happening next uh, Saturday and Sunday. And you will see the times posted in the bulletin. Coming up on the 12th of July is the Cemetery Committee meeting. Harvest Festival Planning Committee is also meeting on the 12th of July and the Redeemer Fellowship meeting will be happening also on the 13th of July. Happy birthday to Arlene Kunde, uh, Breland uh, Fennel Leach, Lee Thane, uh, Linda Sinclair, Leroy Reniger, Doris Menchow, Lisa Friesenhan, Aaron Lampman, Neil Klein, Marsha Schultz, uh, Yvonne Scheibe, Janice Gangower, and Carson Manning and Diane Little. And finally, happy wedding anniversary to Randall and Emily Reinhardt. Any other announcements we need to be made aware of this day? Then join with me if you are able as we worship the Lord our God. Please join with me now as we say together the call to worship that's found in your morning bulletin. <clears throat> Almighty and most loving God, we come here this morning to worship you. We celebrate this Independence Day and the founding of our country. We know that freedom is a great gift as well as a great responsibility. May we be mindful of this day as we celebrate that others may not share the freedoms that we have. Help us to be motivated to support democracy for all. Let us remember that you love us all. Let us worship God. Amen. Our opening hymn for this morning is hymn number 809, God of Our Fathers.
praise ever thine to thee, O God. We give thanks for life. We give thanks for freedom. We give thanks for being able to worship here freely today in this moment, in this hour. We also come, O oh God, to confess our sin and our wrongdoing. Please pray with me if you are able as we pray together the prayer of praise and adoration, also found in your morning bulletin. And let us pray. Eternal and most loving God, we are thankful for the freedom that you give us. We are, we are thankful that we live in a country that affirms democracy and the rights and the benefits for all. We recognize that we take for granted the freedom that you give us. Help us, we pray, to be responsible stewards of all that you have entrusted to us. May we be mindful regarding how we can help others, especially those who do not have as much as we do. Forgive us for what we have done, and forgive us for what we have left undone. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I thought, we're going to save him from getting any more damage, okay? So I'm going to be good and stand right here, okay? So you have no problem seeing me. All right, well, today is, as you all know, today is Independence Day. Today is when we celebrate the founding of our wonderful country, the United States of America. And in honor of that, as I told Sissy, I decided to wear my Naval War College tie. It's frame a little bit because I've had a long time, but I decided I would wear it. And I was thinking about other sites connected with the founding uh, of our country. And the thing I thought about was uh, not too long ago, several years ago, when I was in Philadelphia. And I was in Philadelphia because I had just completed, I had just completed what was known as Command Staff General College for the Army. So I just com completed all of this training to be a better, quote, staff officer in the Army. And it was a weekend, and I thought, I really want to get out of Fort Dix. So uh, I and a friend of mine, we drove in Philadelphia, parked and walked around uh, the city, went to the, I don't think we went to the Mint, we did go to the Liberty Bell, we did go to Independence Hall, but my favorite, of course, was the Philadelphia Art Museum. And does anybody know why the Philadelphia Art Museum is so famous? Yeah, I got to do my little rocky dance at the top of the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum, which looks out over this beautiful view of Philadelphia. But my favorite part of that trip is right next to the Philadelphia Art Museum, which is superb, by the way, is the Philadelphia Art Center. And what is unique about that? You have all of these row houses there that date back to the Revolution. And nearly every day, day when you're there, there's all of these American flags posted outside. So if you look down the street, you see these beautiful, beautiful red brick row houses dating back to the Revolutionary War with all of these flags there. But the other thing that really stood out to me there is that there is on one corner in, in, in the Art Center area, there is literally a neighborhood memorial there to every person from that neighborhood who has died on behalf of defending the country. Goes clear back to World War II. And the most remarkable thing of it is, is that this memorial was funded by residents in the neighborhood. They actually raised the money, they bought the concrete, they set the stools, they planted the garden, 
They did everything on it, and it's still meticulously maintained to this very day. And they've got a, you know, they've got a marker there dating what people from the neighborhood died during World War II, what people from the neighborhood died during Korea, what people from the neighborhood died during Vietnam, what people from the neighborhood died during Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and Iraq and Afghanistan. That was just phenomenal for me. In many respects, that almost superseded seeing all of this beautiful art that I saw at the Philadelphia Art Museum. So today, when we remember the founding of our country, and as we celebrate the freedoms that we have, also remember those who toil and also those who commemorate and those who really, really preserve, preserve and honor those who have sacrificed on behalf of all of us. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me if you are able as we sing together the second hymn for this morning, hymn number 797, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Ebron 
and said, Behold, we are your bone and flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you that led us out and brought in Israel. And the Lord said to you, You shall be the shepherd of my people Israel. You shall be the prince over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to King at Abram, and King David made a covenant with them at Abram before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he was began to reign, and he reigned 40 for 40 years. At Abram, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all of Israel and Judah 33 years. And David dwelt in the stronghold and called to the city of David. And David built the city round about from Milo inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord of God of hosts was with him. The epistle reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in body or out of body, I do not know. God knows. And I know this man was caught up into paradise, whether in body or out of body, I do not know. God knows. For he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though if I wish to boast, I shall not be a fool, for I shall be, I shall be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees or hears from me. And to keep me from being too elated by his abundance of revelation, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I besought the Lord about this, that it should be that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all more gladly boast of my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with the weaknesses, insults, hardship, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. Please rise if you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And our Gospel lesson for this morning comes to us from the first Gospel, from the Gospel of Mark, reading from the sixth chapter and reading verses 1 through 13. Listen now for the word of God as it comes to us from the writer of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus left there and he went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. Now when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where does this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And, and they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went out teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. There were his, these were his instructions. 
Take nothing for the journey except the staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. May the Lord bless our hearing and increase our understanding and enlightenment of God's holy word, not only this day, but forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. We will now pause for a brief moment of silent meditation. Oh God, as we breathe in the joy of being able to live free and to be free and to worship freely, let us have the resolve that we need to be responsible in all that we do and say and how we act. Let us exhale any irresponsibility or selfishness we may carry this day. Let us inhale the love for your word. Let your word instill itself in our lives. Let your word take on flesh for us and become real so we might become more faithful. Let us exhale any unfaithfulness that we may carry within ourselves this day. Let us inhale the knowledge and the reality that you are always with us in all times and in all places, in our life, in our death, in our life beyond death. And with that, let us exhale any uncertainty or any doubt that we may have with regard to your faithfulness to us and to our world. We ask and we pray this day in celebration of you who is with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we want to talk about our ever, ever evolving journey, our ever evolving process of becoming a more perfect union as the United States of America. What that means, ever evolving, becoming a more perfect union. Well, 15 years ago, 15 years ago, I visited a mosque in Augusta, Georgia. Now, I was then at that time serving on active duty with the Army as a Medical Service Corps officer at Fort Gordon, Georgia. And part of the job description, dare I say, for what I did at, uh, at that time at Dwight D. Eisenhower Army Medical Center is that I would occasionally go out and speak to various organizations in the community, and in con including congregations, religious congregations, in terms of mental health issues, particularly post-traumatic stress disorder. So on this occasion, this Islamic congregation had asked me if I would come and give a brief presentation on trauma, particularly post-traumatic stress disorder. So when I visited the mosque, it was during Ramadan, the holiest time of the Islamic year. The custom is to fast during the day, and then you break the fast at night with a dinner called an iftar. The night that I spoke at the mosque, they invited me to stay for the iftar. That was really nice of them. I arrived at the mosque and was greeted by the imam and the lay religious leader, now, I was wearing my Army ACU uniform at the time, and so I had to remove my boots, and I had to wash my feet before I went into the main worship area where I kneeled on a carpet. Now, I have to say that the service went really, really well, and the dinner afterwards was delicious. My Muslim hosts were very gracious. Now, as I left the mosque, 
I went out to the parking lot to my then precious 2000 black Jeep Cherokee, okay? And I noticed that there were some green stains on the surface of the hood of the vehicle, which I had not seen before. I then grew worried. Paranoia sets in, right? As the Buffalo Springfield said so eloquently, paranoia strikes deep into your heart, it will creep. Well, guess what? At that moment, it was creeping into my heart. I thought, is someone trying to tamper with my car? Is this religious persecution since I'm parked at a mosque? Is someone tailing me? My Muslim hosts were also concerned. Thankfully, one of the Muslim men suggested that we pop the hood of the vehicle, which we did. And guess what? The mystery was revealed. Apparently, when I had gotten my car serviced, the cap on the radiator line wasn't secured enough. So the green ooze that I noticed on the car hood was indeed antifreeze. My Muslim friends and I laughed in relief. We weren't being persecuted. Instead, a mechanic didn't secure the cap tight enough. I subsequently went to the Jeep dealer and they had to repaint the right side of my car frame that was affected. There you go. Sometimes it's not persecution. Sometimes it's what? The cap for the antifreeze is in tight enough. 245 years ago, can you believe it? 245 years ago, this day, the American colonies declared independence from the British Empire. The Declaration of Independence states, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes of, the causes which impel them, which impel them to separate. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all people are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments have instituted among people, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter and to, and to abolish it, and to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall most seem likely the effects their safety and happiness. You can tell this is 18th century language. We don't talk this way now in 2021. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and others who attended the 1776 Continental Congress in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, wanted to affirm a new government which would recognize the rights of all, e pluribus unum, out of many, one would become the motto of the United States of America. As a country, we have strived to become a more perfect union. This has not been without a struggle in our own history. Consider the War of 1812, the Civil War, slavery, Reconstruction, the Civil Rights Act, and the 1960s and beyond. Black Lives Matter, the full recognition of women and minorities in the full life of our country, threats of white nationalism and other domestic, international, and now cyber terrorism. So today we reflect where we have come from in the last 245 years, and we look forward to where we may travel 
as a country into the future. The writer of 2 Samuel describes how all of the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, we are your own flesh and blood. The text goes on to say, when all of the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a compact with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. 2 Samuel 5, 3. So David makes a covenant with the people of Israel. This is described as an unconditional covenant made between God and David, through which God promises David and Israel that the Messiah would come from the lineage of David and that the tribe of Judah would establish a kingdom that would endure forever. This type of covenant, which is called the Davidic covenant, is unconditional because God does not place any conditions whatsoever on obedience upon its fulfillment. The surety of the promises made rests solely on God's faithfulness and does not depend at all on David or Israel's obedience. Biblical scholars have argued that this covenant structure formulated by David becomes the basis of Jesus's covenant for us, meaning the unconditional covenant of David becomes the unconditional covenant of Jesus. That God's love is unconditional and that it is free and that it is available to all of us. No doubt it was this message of God's unconditional love that Jesus gave that upset the hometown of Nazareth, particularly in the synagogue audience. Mark describes one person observing, where did this man get these things? What's this wisdom that's been given him that even he does miracles? Mark 6, 3. Jesus isn't meeting the expectations of his worshiping community. Instead of subscribing to a covenant that is conditional, meaning I will honor you as long as you honor me. Instead, Jesus is saying in contrast, no, I will honor, I will love you, meaning God will honor and love you, even if you don't reciprocate that love back to God. That is a tremendous, tremendous change in evolution of thinking and religious understanding. This idea was dangerous. It was dangerous to the religious leaders of Jesus' time, and I would argue that this idea is still very dangerous in our own time with regard to our religious systems. God says that we need to reach out to others, those who are the strangers, those whom we may not even like, those whom we would consider to be the other. Our American experience has survived and it's even thrived because we have said and believed that everybody counts, that everybody is important and that everybody needs, everybody who has needs and everybody who has rights and everybody who has beliefs, that all need to be recognized and that all need to be affirmed. Yes, Willie Nelson and Jerry Jeff Walker were right in their observation as the patron saints of Texas music that our country is exceptional and in the words of Willie and in the words of Jerry Jeff Walker when they describe Lukenbach, Texas where everybody is somebody. That is our motto here in the United States, where everybody is somebody. Thank you, Willie Nelson. Thank you, Jerry Jeff Walker. That's us. As long as you and I remember that, then I believe that our country will continue to thrive and that our future will be bright for everyone. I also think it's wise to exercise our cultural humility and even our humor to recognize 
as I said at the top of the sermon, it's not always persecution. Sometimes it's just the radiator cap not being on tight enough. We can continue to prosper as a country and as a people when we remember that we all need each other. That everyone in this country is a part of a beautiful, beautiful quilt that is in fact and continues to be and continues to evolve as being the United States of America. Let us remember that and let us celebrate that and recognize the sacred in all of us. May it be so. Happy Independence Day. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we come before the Lord's table. And on the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them and he said, this is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is my new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. I will not drink it again until I come to you in the kingdom of God, when the kingdom of God comes. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you and me. Do this and drink ye all of it in his memory. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and most eternal God, we have eaten your bread and we have drunk of your wine. And as we have done that, as we have consumed these elements, we remember your sacrifice for each and every one of us. We remember that because you have died and because you have risen from the grave, that all of us have eternal life, this day and forevermore. Let us live as resurrected people, let, let us live as liberated people, and let us live as people who have res freedom and responsibility in a way that we can convey Christian love to all that we encounter, this day and always. May we do so, may we pray. In your name. Amen. We now continue our worship this morning as we come before our God again in prayer. And as we do so this morning, we remember the following persons in our prayers. Wanda Haker, Vivian Wilson, Tommy and Judy Brown, Mel and Elsie Barnett, Leola Schultz, Joyce Schaefer, Marianne Bilkey, Fuzzy Wiederstein, Emily Haker, Helen Lundsman, Harry Lee Schneider, Debbie Babcock, Reagan and Jeannie Rahi, Karen Wieters, the family of Nelmine Frobis, Lucille Ewald, we recall and remember today, who recently passed. My cousin George, my cousin George Gullickson and my cousin Roger Gullickson. And we remember Reverend Charles Stark, who this very day starts a new interim pastorate at St. Peter's United Church of Christ in Copeland. Let us pray. Almighty and most eternal and loving God, we lift up these names that we have recalled and uttered this morning, that their lives might be blessed, that we might be blessed as your people, 
We're thankful that you have created us to be a part of this wonderful country, the United States of America. Help us, we pray, as Americans to be able to extend courtesy and love to all. Help us to work for democracy and the continuing evolution of democracy in our country, in our community, in our world. May we know, O oh God, that you have given us a lot of freedom, and with that comes a lot of responsibility. Help us to be responsible, help us to be accountable to one another in all that we do, in all that we say, in all that we believe. Be with us this day, O oh God, as we seek to continue to be your beacon of light here in the Zeal community, here in our community of Marion, here in our state of Texas, here in our country, the United States of America, and here in your world. Where there is hunger, may we be able to feed people who need to have be fed. Where there is nakedness, may we provide clothing to those who need covering. Where those who are imprisoned, where those who are feeling oppression through whatever means, let us be able to provide relief, let us be able to provide justice, let us be able to provide jubilation and liberty for those and for all of us. Be with those this day who serve in the military, either foreign and domestically, that their lives might be blessed and that their families might be blessed. And be with the leaders of our nation and the leaders of our world, including President Joseph Biden, that they might always act on behalf of peace and justice and liberty for all. And guide us now, O Lord, as we pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> As God has shown his graciousness to all of us and, and benefited our lives greatly, let us show our gratitude for the goodness that God has extended to each and every one of us. Will the ushers please come forward for this morning's offering? <laughs> Bless this sacred sanctuary and community of worship and congregation of Redeemer United Church of Christ here in Zeal in Marion, Texas. Enable us to continue to do the work that you've commissioned us to do. Enable us to be loving, enable us to be committed to one another, enable us to be accountable in what we do with one another in, in our shared collaborative ministry, and help us to be your hands, your feet, your voice in this community and be able to help those especially who have no voice. Bless us this day and bless us always. We pray in your heavenly name. Amen. Let us continue our worship now in our responsive prayer of dedication. 
God of steadfast love and faithfulness, who made a covenant with the house of David. We bring our gifts so that our covenant with him may be extended throughout the world. We offer ourselves here as temples of your chosen one, David's royal son, Jesus Christ. Alive in the spirit and empowered by service, we go forth in his name to proclaim your love as a sanctuary of those who are in need. Amen. Our closing hymn for this morning is hymn number 799, America Beautiful. comes responsibility and comes accountability. Go this day knowing that God has intended and determined to allow us to have the fullest and best life possible. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the presence and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs>